Track Editor is a fast and simple tool in 3D Studio Max for working with tracks of animation on any kind of animatable rig. In this case, with the character rig selected, selecting multiple objects shows the tracks grouped together using their sub-anim paths so that you don't see more tracks than need be. The tracks that are currently shown all have frozen transforms. This can get quite confusing for an animator working with the tracks in 3D Studio Max. The power is in the controllers, but they do add a lot of clutter. It's very easy to filter out this clutter and be able to show only the tracks that you want to work with. Hiding the parent tracks will take any of the tracks that aren't at the end of the tree and hide them off for you. You can also then hide off the tracks that we're not going to be working with. For instance, the frozen position tracks, being able to multi-select them, and the frozen rotation tracks. And we can right-click and we can toggle their keyable state, making them non-keyable. At this point, we can also turn on the filter animatable tracks. And this will now show only the tracks that will be able to be receiving animation from the end user. This can make it very, very quick and simple for animators to be able to work with and animate their characters. Once animation mode is entered and keys have been set on a track, we can see that the tracks turn red, showing that there is indeed animation on them. And with a bright red, it shows that they actually have a key at that point in time. It's very quick and easy to be able to work with your tracks on mass now because all the tracks reside in one place. We can take all of the tracks for the rotation, select one, shift select, and then type in the value that we're interested in. In this case, zero to zero the controls back out again. Now these controls are FK controls and even the position values are no longer needed. We'll right click on those and toggle their keyable state as well so that they're no longer seen. This means that any time they're selected with a filter for animated tracks on, only those tracks are ever visible now. This also makes this tool an excellent tool for technical directors for helping to set up the characters. Once tracks are animated, it's also really easy to filter for tracks that are animated. Turn off the other two filters and turn on filter for animated tracks and now we'll only see the tracks that actually have keys on them. Selecting objects that haven't been keyed yet will actually only show those tracks that have keys. It can also be very handy for removing the animation. Selecting the left arm now, you can take all the tracks, right click, and say delete all keys. This will remove all the keys off those tracks so they no longer have any. Again, we can unfilter for those, and decide to do other setup if, we need, if need be. Track Editor also filters out different types of values. For instance, right now we're only viewing the transform tracks that are on any of these selected objects. We can also show modifiers, which will show all the modifier properties. And in this case, it's showing the modifier properties for custom attributes as well, and all the attribute properties, because the Show Custom Attribute Properties filter is also turned on. Turning that off will actually not show any of the custom attributes. Those custom attributes can reside on any max object. A max object isn't an object in the scene, but it can be a controller as well in a controller stack. It can be a modifier. It can be all kinds of different areas in 3D Studio Max. It's also possible to show the base object types. Those object types are the base values that are stored at the very base of the object. In this case, we have tracks like render thickness and, and render sides. You'll notice that these tracks show up as yellow. The reason they show up as yellow is 3D Studio Max doesn't assign controllers to all tracks immediately. They are animatable, but they don't have a controller assigned. You can actually go and assign controllers through uh, track editors well by right-clicking and saying set default controller. It can make it very, very quick and simple to be able to set controllers and set keys and animation tracks on them. Track editor also has the ability to be able to show material and properties. This can be great for when you want to try and navigate large material trees and find certain values to be able to work with. The uh, jacket selected, we can see all the base material properties in this case. Values can be entered into Track Editor in an absolute or relative way. In this case, we're going to be working with just the rotation tracks, for instance, on these three objects. Let's rotate them all to different angles. Now let's filter out for only the animatable tracks again that we've already locked. We can see that when multiple objects are picked, it's the first tracks values that are currently shown in Track Editor by default. We can actually change that behavior by in options 
and toggling on display first, which only shows the first value, or toggling it off and showing the averaged value of those tracks. Again, we can also work with those uh, values in an absolute or relative way. Right-clicking and scrubbing on any track or any group of selected tracks is always a relative input. By default, clicking on a track and typing in the value is always an absolute value. You can also change that behavior by turning off the A button, adjust values absolute or relative. With that value turned off and the controller selected, you can see now the value comes in at a value of zero, even though none of the objects have a zero value. This is an offset value. For instance, we could type in a value of 10 and offset all of the controllers by 10, even though they still now each have a different value on them. Character rigs can be of different sizes. And when working with position values, for instance, this can become apparent, or even uh, tracks like the bend angle on modifiers and whatnot. If we right click and input that value, we might see that the value input is actually quite slow or quite fast, depending on the scale of the character in the scene. You can speed up and slow down sliding on a track by holding down Control to speed it up or Alt to slow it down, just like spinners in 3D Studio Max. We also have the ability to turn up and down the overall speed. So we could turn up the scrub speed to a 10 times multiplier. It'll now move 10 times faster than it did before. Control and Alt will still work and speed up or slow down that behavior even more. Slowing it right down, of course, will then slow that value down for very, very finite controls. Track Editor has many other options. We'll cover those in further videos.